In this video, uh, we'll go over how to simplify radical expressions um, that involve a radical index other than 2. Uh, just to illustrate what I'm uh, talking about, let's jump right into the first problem. This is a radical expression, the cube root of 1000, and this little number right next to the radicand this is called the index. So this is an index which is not 2. Um, so what you do to proceed is consult the table of powers for numbers which are perfect cubes like 8 which is 2 to the third. The base is 2, the exponent is 3, 2 to the third is 8. 27 is 3 to the third. The base is 3, the exponent is 3, 3 to the third is 27. The next entry, the base is 4, the exponent is 3, 4 to the third is 64. You get the idea. So if you have this table uh, to consult, you just look among the perfect cubic numbers and you see if, in fact, 1,000 is one of them. And in fact it is. Since 1,000 is 10 cubed, the cube root of 1,000 is 10. Pretty simple. Uh, moving on to example B. The problem is cube root of 125 plus cube root of 128 minus cube root of 54. And so since each part of this problem, each term is a cube root, again consult the perfect cubes, 8, 27, 64, etc. And you see if these numbers are in fact perfect cubes. 125 right here, yes, this is a perfect cube. It's the cube of 5. So the cube root of 125 happens to be 5. That's because 125 is 5 to the third. Now, the next term, cube root of 128, you'd search through these perfect cubes and you don't find 128 anywhere. Then you do the next best thing. You look at the perfect cubes which are smaller than 128, such as 125, 64, 27, 8, and you look for a perfect cubic number, in this case 64, which might divide evenly into 128. 64 goes into 128 twice. That means you can rewrite cube root 128 as cube root of 64 times 2. Follow the same procedure for cube root of 54. Search through the table. You realize, aha, 27, that's a perfect cubic number and it divides evenly into 54 twice, so that means you can rewrite this third term as cube root of 27 times 2. Now, the cube root of 64, consulting the table, is 4. So this middle term simplifies as 4 times cube root of 2, minus the third term simplifies as 3, times cube root of 2. So we have three terms. Two terms are like terms, meaning they both possess cube root 2, cube root 2. So you can combine those, and it, this is very similar to something like 4q minus 3q. Well, 4q minus 3q is just 1q. So this becomes 5 plus 1 cube root of 2. Most people don't write it that way. They instead write it as 5 plus, and skip writing the 1, 5 plus cube root 2. Now, third example, C, we have an index of 4. So what we're looking for are perfect fourth powers inside of the radicands. And so instead of consulting the perfect cubes, you would consult this list of perfect 
fourth powers. 16, which is 2 to the fourth, 81, which is 3 to the fourth, 256, which is 4 to the first, etc., etc. And you don't find 32 in that list. So you do the next best thing. You look for numbers smaller than 32 within the list, like 16, and see if you can perhaps rewrite 32 as a product of a perfect fourth power, in which, in this case, yes, 16 times 2. 16 is a perfect fourth power. Same procedure, follow that for 162. You don't find it in the list, so you look for numbers in this list smaller than 162. In this case, 81 times 2 is equal to 162. Now, this 16 is a perfect fourth power, so the fourth root of 16 is 2. And the other number, 2, which is not a perfect fourth power, has to remain inside the radicand. Minus 81 is a perfect fourth power, so the fourth root of 81 is 3. So this second term becomes 3 times fourth root of 2. Now we have two terms. Each term possesses fourth root 2. So this is something similar to 2w minus 3w, which is negative 1w. So up here, using the same exact idea, 2 fourth root 2 minus 3 fourth root 2 is negative 1 fourth root of 2. But most people don't write it that way. They just write it as negative fourth root 2 without writing the 1 in front.